This episode is funded by the Glick Fund and the Crystal Hahn Family Foundation, who inspire philanthropy and creativity. Imagine an artist who not only has a black belt in photorealism, but also abstract art. That would be one of my favorite artists, Eric Helvey. We're here in the East Village in New York City to check out his studio. Follow me. I'm Eric Helvey. I'm an artist. I live and work in New York City. I was born in Portland, Oregon, but when I was nine, I moved to South Africa and uh, ended up at a, a school that was very heavily uh, into the arts, painting, drawing, music, and uh, learned a lot uh, of base knowledge stuff that I still am going off of. I had gotten really into drawing and then I started oil painting and then it was over, you know? It was just like, it was, it clicked so quickly in my brain and I, re I remember feeling as a teenager thinking I, there was no limit to it. It, you know, for me, I could could go with it for forever. You know, in my mind. One of the things I love about your paintings is the way that you can throw down extreme skill with you know realism, and then you go abstract. I mean, specifically, like, tell me about these two different paintings we've got going on here. Right. Well, they both started as a black and white, total photorealistic treatments. Uh, this painting here um, did not obviously did not have any of these uh, more aggressive marks. So I spent about a month and a half trying to make the eye portion as realistic as possible. From there, let it sit. It was, in my mind, finished. But for some reason, uh, whether it was just the way it was painted or, or just my mood at the time, I just got very dissatisfied with the image you know, itself. And, and then it underwent a bunch of changes. Uh, and so then about two years later, we're standing here. And this is now what you see. So it. it for, for some reason, the month and a half of detailed work was um, something that I just needed to act against. I know when I look at your stuff, I mean, does it feel like relief? Or is it more like, after you've done all that and then you do the abstract kind of like, like you said, really harsh lines on top of it? Like, There's something incredibly freeing about the destruction of an image, uh, especially when it's your own image. And I remember when I was younger, uh, being fascinated with art that had been vandalized huh. uh, and then thinking well I don't want to vandalize other people's art but I could get away with vandalizing my own and so right, then right. you know that's kind of where this this idea came from. The level of skill you have with photorealism where, when did you start doing that? Probably when I was about 16 uh, I realized that I could copy something pretty perfectly and then of course you know as you just keep going you acquire the skills to do it and so now I would say that I'm completely proficient uh, you know, to tr make any image or anything as realistic uh, as possible. So the, the illusion is complete at this point in my mind. But, you know, when you get up close, the idea is that the viewer realizes it's painted. It falls apart. I mean, patience is a big, a big factor. Uh, but the patience doesn't really come from... It doesn't really come from me being a patient person, I think, as much as just really wanting a beautiful end result and understanding what that result or what that finished product needs. And so then it's a relationship, it's a relationship. It's not me, you know, sort of breathing and trying to calm myself down as much as um, looking at the painting, listening to what it has to say, and then responding to it. This sort of obsessive making was always fueled by complete dissatisfaction with the end results. Uh, so I would do a painting and then think, well, that's fine, but I'm not happy with it. And how do I make it better? So then I would have to do another painting and then do another painting and do another painting. And even then, when my technical profic proficiency was getting to a level that I was happy with, then the conceptual side or the, the ideas weren't where, they, where I wanted them to be. And so then that just kept moving me forward. And it's interesting when things start small like that, but you keep pushing at them, they, they sort of grow on their own, or they feel like they grow on their own. And so it seems kind of like a very seamless 
trajectory or a seamless reality to have gone from that very perilous beginning to where I am now, you know. You can't understand if a painting's good or bad if it doesn't already exist as a painting. And so making is the most important thing. And then thinking about what you've made comes second. Any, any person or no matter how old would understand that if you really want to achieve something, you'll do whatever it takes, you know. Uh, if you have a goal in your mind, then you just go for it. If you would like to check out more of our episodes, head over to our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe so you not only get a front row seat to new episodes, but you also help us create more content. Thanks so much for tuning in and be outrageous.